How to tie your own bucktail jigs. Part one, pouring lead. All right, this morning, um, I'm gonna walk you through the process of um, pouring lead and making bucktail jigs. Um, I am an avid saltwater fisherman. I fish for flukes, stripers, things like that, and I pour all my own, um, my own weights and all my own jigs. Um, so it's that time of year now. It's nice and cold and uh, snowy outside. So that's what I kind of do in the off season to get ready for the next year. Uh, I usually pour a couple hundred of them and uh, dish them out between some family members and things like that. So um, today I'm just gonna walk through the basic steps of how you kind of start, um, start pouring. The whole process with fluxing lead, melting the lead, pouring it in the actual, uh, the jig. Um, and then other videos I'll take you through uh, painting, tying the actual tails and things like that. All right, the first step in bucktail making um, is you obviously need to melt lead. So I have quite a bit of lead on hand. Uh, I have some of these big two pound ingots um, that I've bought and had some uh, some friends make for me as well. These are triple fluxed, um, which means you add a little bit of uh, wax to it and it actually smokes real bad, but it brings all the impurities to the top. You can scrape them out so you're obviously your lead sticks better. Um, and the shapes hold a lot better. So this stuff is really good for my bucktail jigs. I don't use this lead for making sinkers. Uh, I usually make bank sinkers like this, threes, fours, fives, sixes, and sevens. Um, but I usually use crappier lead for that because it just weights. Uh, they don't need to be painted and things like that. So um, the first step, obviously, is to have lead, have a melting pot. I have a hand pot that I pour from Lee. I also have this larger uh, Pro 420 um, Lee melting pot here. Um, so it's melting some lead now. It's actually warming up. It's actually pretty hot, but as you'll see, some lead's down in there melting. It's going to start melting. It takes about 20 minutes uh, to really heat up. So um, from that point on, once that's heated up, I pretty much take the jigs I'm going to be using. These jigs, I have several of them. I hear some spro heads, bank sinkers here, banana jigs. Banana head jigs. Here's some more spros, some decoy anchors for uh, for duck hunting and things like that. So uh, we'll, I'll walk you through the whole process. So right now we're just letting the uh, pot warm up. I'll show you more of the pot, show you what the lead looks like, and we'll fill the pot with more lead, uh, and we'll start pouring. So I used several different types of lead. Um, when I'm pouring my bucktail jigs, like the actual jig heads, like these here. Uh, you can see how shiny and nice it is all put together. Uh, I poured some yesterday, just a couple. Uh, I, gotta, I pour a lot more, obviously. Um, I use really high quality lead. So this lead here, um, or two pound ingots. I have two actually in there and I got this one to put in there after it starts melting. Uh, these have been like triple fluxed. So fluxing is when you add a little bit of um, wax to the hot pot, it smokes like crazy, but it brings all the impurities to the top. So. You want to scrape those impurities out. I pour, I pour all the impurities in here. This usually fills up by the end of the thing, but it's really like a dusty. You can see all that that crap that's down in there. It's really like a nasty dust. Um, what that does is, if you pour it with any impurities in there, um, it just makes them not as nice. It makes little valleys and dips in them, makes them different colors, and you want them to really hold together well because you're going to be um, powder coating these. So. Um, I use these really, really nice lead ingots for my bucktail jigs. You can see here's just some extra lead that I had from last year. Really good stuff. Um, down here is just bullets. Uh, a buddy of mine goes to the range and picks up bu buckets of these, probably a couple hundred pounds. It's just filled to the top at one point. You can hear the bullets down inside there. These are also lead from the bullets. So this takes a lot of work to get the lead pure. I fill up that pot with them. And uh, you can see here's some sh here's a casing, brass casing. There's also some lead inside here, so that's some lead, lead, and things like that. So uh, this takes lots of fluxing um, just to get it pure. I use these mainly for my bank sinkers because they just they can hold together like that, but uh, they don't have to be too. I also use this for a mixture of both. This is pretty clean lead. It has to be fluxed at least once. Uh, it's about 10 pounds right here. It's actually very heavy. Um, I have a bunch of these as well, and I use these for um, the jig heads and the weights. 
while the pot is warming up and starting to melt the lead that I put in there, which is going to take about 20 to 25 minutes to really get started, uh, I, I put some of my jigs on top of it. Uh, what this does is warms up the interior. You want the interior to be pretty warm so the lead does not stick. You don't want that to stick to the inside because then you get some crappy pores. Uh, for an example, yesterday wasn't uh, warmed up enough and you can see how the jig is poured there and it actually missed the bottom because it must have been a little cold right there. So uh, I'm just going to remelt these. I have a couple of them uh, and then I let it warm up a little bit more before I put it in there. So. Uh, I'm going to rotate out some of these and just let these get a little bit warmer. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright, while this lead is melting, I'll just tell you a couple things you're going to need, obviously, um, for pouring your own bucktail jigs or weights. So, obviously, the first thing is lead. So, I had described the lead before, what kind of lead it is, and things like that. Um, you're going to need molds. These molds are available everywhere. Uh, these are large banana jigs. They come in decoy anchors, bank sinkers, spro. Let's see what that is. Ultra Minnow, which is like the Spro head, uh, and things like that. So you can find them anywhere. Best Pro, Cabela's. Uh, I buy all mine from TerminalTackle.com uh, or it's TerminalTackleCo.com. Uh, they have very decent prices. Still charge you shipping, but it's a small place in New York uh, that'll ship them out to you. Uh, but they carry everything. Soup to nuts. You can buy an entire setup there of what you need. Um, I started uh, with an individual regular pot by Lee. It's just a handheld pot that you just fill it up. You couldn't even put two pounds in there. Probably you put two pounds. That was actually most you can probably put in there. Um, I stepped up to the Lee 420. Um, holds a lot of lead. Uh, probably close to 10 pounds, which is great for constant pouring. Um, so you're going to need something that obviously melts the lead. You're going to need lead. Uh, you're going to need the jigs or these uh, molds here. Also, a good ladle. This ladle I'm going to heat up once the uh, lead starts to melt. Uh, the ladle will scoop out any of the impurities off the top once you flux it. And you actually, these little lips will pour out the hot lead. This thing needs to be hot as well, or the lead won't pour out of here. You also need a pair of these little snips. Uh, these are lead snips. Um, what happens is when you take these out, when you take a bucktail out of the mold, it's going to have a little lip on there from where you're actually pouring it in. This, at any time, you can just go and trim it off and you can add that back to your pot. So those are really, really handy. Last but not least, last but not least, you're going to need hooks. Uh, all the molds say what type of hooks they use, what sizes and things like that. Uh, I usually use these Mustad. Uh, these are some real big ones. These are probably, oh, I don't know, seven or uh, probably eight. 8-0s, 5-0s, 7-0s, 6-0s, these are 4-0s or smaller ones. Um, I just buy them wherever I can, near tackle shows or online in bulk and things like that. I actually am running low on the 5-0s, I probably need to replace these, but um, you're going to need hooks because inside the jigs, it tells you what size hooks they're actually going to need. Let's see if I can... So inside the jig, you can see here, it's going to be half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce, one and a half. And on this side here, let's see if I can get this in focus here. No, of course not. But in the same spots, there you go. You can see it. It's a little upside down. Let's see if I can put it like this. There we go. You can see on this side, 5 0 2 hooks. You can put any size hook in there, really, but it, they don't look great sometimes if you use the, the wrong size. Like maybe one or two sizes each direction. So, so the first step, you're gonna to want to put your hook down in the opening that it is there. So I'm gonna pour a one ounce spro head here, the 4-0 hook. I usually do four or fives in here. So you're gonna line it up right into that hook channel, and shut the mold. Slide the mold in this little holder right here, and then lift the handle. Just like that, it's filled. Usually let it sit level for that until it hardens. You can lift it right out. There it is. Pretty much repeat that a couple hundred times. So I'll get some more footage of this and then you can watch me for different sizes.
I didn't cover it specifically in this video, but safety is very important. A mask of some sort to keep the fumes out of your lungs, uh, some glasses, and some even some gloves would help. Uh, make sure there's plenty of airflow as well flowing through the area you're pouring this lead. Using the lead shears that I have, uh, that I showed you in the beginning, this is where you're going to trim off all of the excess that was poured from the mold. I just put it right back into the pot afterwards. After about 45 minutes of pouring, uh, I poured quite a few. Uh, I have quite a few more to pour, but this is going to be good for today. Um, probably about 100 more and I'll be, I'll be set. So after this video, I'm definitely going to go through the steps of how to powder coat, which fluid bed and actually powder paint and things like that. Uh, I'll go through that step. And I'll go through the step of actually tying the bucktail. So like here's some of the finished products from last year putting the eyes on and putting the uh, the paint on, tying it up and things like that. So it's going to be like a three or four part series, I think. And um, it'll show the whole process of making All right. it. I hope, every, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this just little tutorial overall of how to uh, pour your own bucktail jigs. This is going to be, like I said, a three or four part series. Um, I'll show you the pouring process, which you just watch now. I'll show you the painting process, which is powder paint, powder coating. Um, I'll show you the next step after that, which is baking them to harden them. Um, and the final process is tying them. So tying them, I sit down after work every, you know, every day, once they're all poured, once they're all painted and I sit and tie them as I watch TV. So we'll do a video on all of that, but this is the part one of three or four that will, uh, show you how to do your own bucktails and weights. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe, please like it if you liked it, if you didn't dislike it I want to be fair at least but like definitely helps um, if you have any questions post them up below I can answer any questions you have or give you links to how to buy all your own things to start pouring your own uh, bucktails and weights so thanks for watching guys it's been real uh, let me get back to pouring I got a, a couple hundred more to do today thanks guys